please pardon the noise. I have a helper. Say hi. 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 I'm cutting this board in half. He's cutting that board in half. This is something I've been wanting to do for quite some time, and that is turn an old, large freezer compressor pump into a high-pressure air compressor. A couple of advantages. For those of you that don't have a whole lot of high volume, these things are dang near free, and they're almost completely silent. That's nice, especially if you're like, I don't know, airbrushing or something. Yeah, you port this into a big tank, get yourself some pressure regulator stuff, so you don't go over, say, 135, 140, 150, turn it on in the morning, half hour later, because they're kind of slow, tank shuts off, it keeps up with you for the rest of the day, and you can have a conversation over the noise. I'm not after that, really. I am after just the raw high PSI. Another nice thing that you can do with these things is you can turn them into vacuum pumps. Now, in this case, on this compressor, the larger line is the vacuum line. From what I understand, usually that's the other way around. These two lines, you don't use them. You can just ignore them. That has to be the vacuum line. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece of hose and an old fuel filter on here just so that uh, it doesn't suck a whole lot of funk in there. And this is my high pressure steel line. So I need to get this from the high pressure steel into something I can attach to. And I'm thinking of trying some solder. Go to copper and solder. I don't know. I expected that line to be copper, not steel. We're going to have to see. My idea for attachment is maybe a touch unorthodox, but isn't that far out of line. This is an old oil pressure cinder. You know, for the generic oil gauges, you get, you get four or five fittings because they don't know what oil galley you have. And so these two here fit together nicely. And I can go from that to anything. So what I'm thinking about doing is re-drilling this the exact size of that line, slipping it on, and soldering it in place. What I don't know is whether or not we're going to get a good solder. I know I'm not supposed to solder to steel, but I'm, I'm willing to give it a try. We'll see. I mean, if it doesn't work, it'll just blow the line up. I'll make sure no one's standing near it. The other thing we could do is uh, flare fittings. I have a flaring tool, but I don't, I don't have any fittings right now. I'm trying to do this on the cheap. I don't have any fittings right now if I flare this, and I don't want to buy anything. So I'm going to try that one. You gonna go pee pee potty in the dog kennels? Shay, are you peeing in the dog kennel? That's fine if you're gonna pee in the dog kennel. Farm kids. And we're ready to put it together. I polished up my metal line. And I have used some very, very ugly stuff. Very ugly stuff. It's called tinner's fluid. It's, for the most part, it's hydrochloric acid in a squeezy bottle. Awesome. Anyways, I got a little bit on my hands. I can tell because of the burning. I'm going to have to go take care of that. I would expect you would use regular plumbing flux. And, uh, you know, it's not rated for these pressures. But come on. It's a little tiny, tiny, tiny line. So uh, if it blows off, you're going to... But you're not going to have a, a rip-roaring, building-killing explosion. That said, if you have a rip-roaring, building-killing explosion, um, yeah, this video is for entertainment purposes and not to be repeated in any way. But I think it'll be fine. Now I'm going to heat it up and see if we can get it to stick.
Perfect. Let's see if I can get this where you can see it. Now, you'll notice that I went to the back side. I know, right? You'd think I would put it on the top side so that it would drip on down through. Ha! -ha it ain't how it works. I put it on the back side and it <laughs> capillary actions up. And I can now see it. I don't know if you can see it in camera or not. I can now see my ring of fresh solder right here. That tells me I got a dang good solder job on there. Yeah. I believe it will be up to the task. Definitely up to the task. Once again, entertainment purposes. Well, this is all cooled up. Let's go ahead, put the unit through some test paces. Oops. Wrap the Teflon in the wrong way. I always wrap the Teflon the wrong way. It's a mental block of mine. Now we're just sort of kludging this together out of some parts. We're in no way leading up to, say, a unnecessarily dangerous proof of concept test. Remember what I said, entertainment value only. Be careful, bend that line a little bit. Bend it too much too often and we're in trouble. This will certainly need to be reworked at some point farther down the line. But for today, this will get us where we need to be. I know 200 PSI isn't very high, especially for what I hope this pump will output. It's the only gauge I had handy. Here we go. <laughs> oh, we are gonna have some fun with this. Does the system leak at all? I hope it leaks. I didn't leave any way to bleed it. So about that proof of concept test. Well, here goes nothing. There's our new high pressure pump. I know it'll go up to 250 because I've seen it go that high. We have the lights. We have a very expensive high speed camera, which I hope to God does not get nailed. I'm gonna turn it on and retreat inside. You, you stay up there, okay? Tire went kaboom. Let's see the smoke and the steam inside? That is from explosive decompression. That looks like it had a puncture right there. An old puncture point, maybe. Definitely looks like it. It generated over 170 psi before it blew. It's amazing. 